So when computers are trying to solve the shortest path on a network or on a map, as in the case of Google Maps, when you have to do measuring like the, the shortest distance to from one point to another, they can't, they don't have a brain that we can do that can go, no, oh, well, maybe this way, maybe this way. They have to write down every step in every calculation. And every step in every calculation is referred to as Dijkstra's algorithm. So the way that it's done is using this rather complicated and rather tedious box method, which textbooks love to do and confuse the heck out of everybody. You do not need to do this in your exam, and I would strongly recommend you not to do this in your exam. However, I'm going to do it anyway, uh, so you can see it and understand why I don't recommend it. So I'm gonna do this example here. I'm going to do it by the annotation method first, so you know what answer I'm aiming for. Then I'm gonna show you the box method, and then I'm gonna do a previous example that I've done on a video and do that as a box method from scratch. So we've, we need to find the shortest path from A to G. So from A to A is zero. The shortest way to get to C is 10. To get to B is 17. Uh, no, it's not. No, it's not 17 because I could go four and two, which is 16. Uh, so that's 14. So I can either do six plus eight is 24. That's going to be the best option. So that'd be 24. Uh, 14 plus 17 uh, is going to be, I would imagine, much shorter than uh, 24 plus five. I think that's going to be my best one. That's going to be, oh, wait a minute, 24 plus five is 29, 10 plus 18 is gonna be 28. So we'll go with 28 there. Uh, 24 plus six or 28 plus nine, that's going to be, we'll go with 24 plus six, which is 30, which means my shortest path should be something like this. Uh, so again, that I've annotated every vertex, I get my full marks. So here is now the box method. So the box method means that you need to draw up a grid something like this. You'll notice there that the amount of rows should equal the amount of columns, and that is equal to the number of vertices you have. This side you can consider to be from, this side you can consider to be to. So I'm going from somewhere to somewhere else. We start as always from the very beginning with well, whichever vertex I need to start from. In this case, it's vertex A. So what I do is on my graph, and I might zoom out here, is I write down the distances from uh, what the distances from each of these points are. So from A to A, well, that's gonna be zero. From A to B is a distance of 18. From A to C, it's a distance of 10. From A to D. Now this time, when we write in this box, we're looking for direct paths. So I'm looking for direct edges. And there are no direct edges from A to D. So what I do is I put an infinity symbol, meaning that it cannot be reached. So that just means it cannot, I can't get there. I, there's no direct path from A to E, no direct path from A to F, and no direct path from A to G. So just in case you missed what I said there, the reason I put that in is that there's no direct path. So what I do is I then go and look at my rows, and what I'll do is I will uh, put a little box around whatever number was the smallest. And that's this one here. Zero is the smallest, which would make sense. There is no other shorter way you can get from A back to A again. And what I'll do is I'll actually just remind myself where that came from. So from A, A was back to A again. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna fill in all of the other bits of the column. Just a reminder that I don't have to deal with A. I never have to go backwards. When you're finding a shortest path, you should never go back to a particular point. So that just reminds me not to do that. So the next row starts by looking at whichever is the next smallest number in the previous. So I've got a choice of either 18 or 10. What's the smallest number? The smallest number is 10. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually make the number 10, the, I'm gonna bring that down like this. 
I'm going to write which uh, point I'm now referring to. I'm now uh, looking at vertex C. I'm going to remind myself where did this 10 came from? This is came from A. So I'm going to put a little orange box around that. And I'm going to put 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So then what I do is I go from, okay, I'm going from C to B. So from C to B, I've got 17. That adds a grand total of 17. So it's 10 plus seven is 17. From C to D is 10 plus four, so that's 14. From D to, sorry, from C to E, well, there's no direct path. From C to F, uh, that has got a grand total of 28. And from C to G, there is no direct path, so that just goes like that. So what I do is I look for the smallest number, and the smallest number there is 14. So I'm going to put a 14 here. It came from C. Put a little box around here. And what I'll do is I'll put 14 like so down that column. Now what I'll do is, I, and I, I'm now dealing with vertex D. So from vertex D back to, uh, to B, it's another two, so that's 16. From vertex D to vertex E, uh, so where's vertex E? There it is, it's up there. So that's 14 plus 15, so that's gonna be 29. And then from vertex D to vertex F is going to be 14 plus 17 which 14 plus 17 should hopefully get me of uh, 14 plus uh, 20 is 24. So take away three is 21, I would believe, yeah. So we have got, hang on, 14 plus 20 is 34, 31, yeah. So the going from D to F, go 31, but we still could get to F via C because we still haven't referred to the C. We could, in theory, bypass this D. And when you're filling in these boxes, you go with whatever's the smallest number. And the smallest number was 28. So I'm gonna put the 28 there. From D to G, there is no direct line, so we'll put that there as well. I look for the smallest number. The smallest number here is 16. So that's when now dealing with vertex B. Put a little box around this. And just a reminder where it came from. It came from D. So from vertex B to vertex E, now there is 16 plus eight, which is 24. Uh, and you'll notice there that I could have chosen either 24 or 29, because I could have gone with my previous one. 24 is the smallest number. With this next one here, we are from B to F. Well, there's no direct path from B to F, so I can either go with no path or 28. So I'm gonna go with 28. And from B directly to G, there's no direct path, so we can put that there. So the smallest number out of these two got to fill in my column there, it is 24. And I am now dealing with vertex E. And just a reminder, this came from B. So now at vertex E, so vertex E to vertex F, I can either go, it's uh, 24 plus five is 29 or 28, because that's the smallest number there. So that's gonna be 28, we'll choose. And from E to G is 24 plus six, which is 30. Again, we choose the smallest number, and the smallest number is 28. And just a reminder, where did that even come from? That was from C, wasn't it? Yeah. So we'll put a box around that. 
We're now dealing with vertex F. So from vertex F to vertex G is 28 plus 9. 28 plus 9 should be, I dare say, 37. Or we can go with the previous one, which is 30. 30 is smaller than 37, so I'm going to put 30. And so that means my final one, 30. And where did that 30 came from? It came from E. So I filled in the table. You could possibly hazard a guess where you could have made all of the possible mistakes. I do mistake. Uh, for me, this gives me more mistakes than not doing it. And the last step is just to go and draw the path. So from th uh, uh, this 30, we went to E. And this was to B. And from B, we went back to D, to C, and to A again. And so we have a total distance of 30, as we established earlier. And we went from A to C to D to B to uh, E. And then obviously to G to finish up there. I'm going to do one more of these. And if you want to go and attempt to do the box method, uh, I really recommend you wouldn't. But I just want to show you another example of this doing this by scratch or from scratch. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to redo an example that I did in the previous video, but this time I'm going to use uh, the ill-fated box method. And what you haven't seen is the fact that I did almost all of this on the video and then I stuffed up all my numbers and I swore loudly. So I'm going to actually start from the very beginning again. So I've got my grid sign to set up. I'm just going to write A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go and list down all of the uh, the numbers from each of the points as I did before. I'm going to start with A. A to A would be 0. A to B is going to be uh, 14. From A to C is going to be 10. From A to D is 7. A to E is unreachable. A to F is unreachable. A to G is unreachable. And A to H is unreachable. So... For this one here, I'm going to put my little grid around, put a little grid around zero, it came from A. And then I'm going to put my next smallest number, which is seven, that came from A, and put a box around it. Then I'm going to fill in the column. So from D, we're going to go and put all the other vertices in. So D to B, there's no direct path. So I can either do infinity or take the number from the previous, which is 14. So I'm going to write 14. Um, from D to C is 7 plus 2, which is 9. So I can either choose 9 or 10 from the previous. 9 is the smallest number. From D to E, there is no direct path. So we can put that in there. From D to F, there are two possibilities. I can either go 7 plus 15, which is uh, 22, uh, or I could do 7 plus 14, which is 21. So we'll go with uh, 21. From D to G, there's no direct path. From D to H, there is a direct path. 7 plus 19, which will get me to 28. He said cautiously, no, 26. I remember how maths works, 26. So what we'll do is we'll pick the smallest number out of all of those ones that aren't in a box. And so the ones that aren't in a box are nine. And where did nine come from? It came from D. We'll put a, and so we're now in vertex C land. So from C uh, to B, is uh, 9 plus 2, which is 11. Or do I go with my previous answer of 14? What's the smallest number? It's 11. And then uh, from C to E, 
is going to be uh, uh, 9 plus 5, which is 14. From C to F is 9 plus 12, which would be 21. So this is an interesting case. I've got from C to F, uh, 9 plus 12 is 21. Or do I go from 21 to D? It doesn't matter. They're both 21. Uh, from C to G, there's no direct path. And from C to H, there is no direct path. Or do I go with my previous answer of 26? Always go with the previous answer of 26, because it's smaller than can't do it. So the uh, smallest number out of all those unboxed answers is 11. It came from, and if I may as well keep the color coding up, 11 came from C. So we'll go vertex B. Vertex B to vertex E, so I can do 11 plus 2, which is 13, or do I keep the previous answer of 14? 13 is smaller, so we'll go with 13. From B to F, there's no direct path, or do I keep the previous answer of 21? I keep the previous answer of 21. Uh, from B to G, there is no direct path, and from B to H, I can either go no direct path, because there's no direct path from B to H, or the previous answer of 26. We'll go 26. Uh, in this case, we go with the smallest answer. The smallest answer is 13. And that came from B. And we're now dealing with vertex E. So from E to F, there's no direct path, or I go with uh, 21. Uh, from E to, so the smallest number there obviously is 21. From uh, E to G is 13 plus 3, which is 16. And there is no direct path from E to H. So it's either infinity or 26. So we'll keep going with that 26. The smallest unboxed answer is 16. So I'm going to put a 16 down here. That came from E. And so we're now, we're dealing with vertex G. So vertex G to vertex F, I could either do 16 uh, plus three is 19 or 21. And 19 is the smallest number, so I'll put 19 there. 16 plus seven to get to H is gonna be 23. So I can either go 23 or the previous answer of 26, 23 is the answer that we go with. And the smallest number out of all of those is 19. 19, and that came from G. Put a box around it. Now we're dealing with vertex F is going to be 24, because uh, it's 19 plus five is 24. Or do I go with the previous answer of 23? Well, the previous answer is smaller, it's 23. So I'm gonna put a 23 there. And that came from vertex G. So 23 uh, from vertex we from vertex G. So we went from G uh, from H to G, from G to E, then to B, then to C then to D, and then back up to A. A to D to C, uh, to, yeah, A, A to, yeah, so it should be A to D, to C, to B, to E, to G, and then to H. And that is using the box method to prove what you can already do with some annotation.